thank you guys. Uh, this is our ninth backpack year since we've started. So um, it's gone by really fast. Next year's our 10th year, so we're trying to come up with something grand uh, to celebrate that year. Um, so I thought I'd talk about what's new in those programs um, and also the food bank because we're really busy right now going into the holidays and just kind of what we're doing there. Uh, but as far as the backpack program, one new thing that we've been trying to do uh, is kind of change the title of that area um, into child hunger programs just because it's no longer just our backpack program. Um, we're going into different areas of serving kids and so we're trying to change that language of thinking as far as feeding children 0 to 18 and what that means. Um, uh, today's Wednesday, so Friday, in a couple days, there'll be 3,466 backpacks that'll be going home. And this is in over 80 schools throughout southeast Nebraska, so not just here in Lincoln. Um, and just this week, uh, we are in 15 of our 16 county service area uh, that we serve, and we've been really trying. Our last county is Thayer County that we've been talking to every year, trying to get that county going. And just this week, um, we were able to talk to that principal, and he's ready to move forward to get a backpack program going there. So now we will be in all 16 counties with the backpack program, which is a really big accomplishment for us. That's been our goal since we've started. Um, so to be able to uh, meet that goal is a really big deal for us. And we've done that with the help of uh, Creating Captains, who has come on board with us this year, uh, which is Matt Davison's um, organization or foundation that he started as a mentoring uh, building leaders and they just chose the backpack program as their um, organization that they wanted to help uh, they wanted their kids to see uh, about see helping others and what that means so we thought it was a good fit and he just came to us and said show me the counties and places where you're not and let's get a program going there so he's been really a key person to getting us um, this year we were able to add the whole junction auburn malcolm dewitt and dorchester and now um, thayer county in, he in hebron so that's a really great thing uh, he's also been helping omaha get some uh, backpack programs clear out west so a great partner to have uh, we started last year high school pantry program at Lincoln High School. Lincoln High School has over 60% of their kids on free or reduced lunch and um, I think for us we kind of forget about high school students. We think you know once they're in high school they can start doing stuff on their own. Maybe they can get food on their own but a lot of staff and social workers are saying what can I do for these high school kids and they were going to our emergency pantry and um, there's an idea about High School Pantries through Feeding America, uh, which is the nation's food bank, about this uh, concept of taking food and taking it into the school and letting kids select food that they would like. So we had just brushed that idea and mentioned it to a social worker at Lincoln High uh, a couple years ago, and she really latched onto it and um, about every quarter would email and just say, is this still a possibility? Can we do this? Um, and by about her fourth email, she said, well, just so you know, I met, I decided to meet with all the administrators at Lincoln High, and everybody's on board, and we have a volunteer group that would do it, so what are our next steps? Um, so we were able to find funding through the St. Mark's Outreach Foundation and Lincoln Benefit Life, and we started a high school pantry at Lincoln High last year. Um, and then we did it twice a month, and it's just set up in their cafeteria, we lay food out, and kids can come down and select food that they want. Um, of course, we push a lot of produce um, at those pantries. We want to get as much good food as we can for high school students. We see around 200 kids each time we run that pantry. Um, we started it this year, and our last pantry, which was a week ago, saw 273 kids. So the largest number we've seen so far. Um, there's an athletic coach that will bring certain athletes up during that time where the mobile pantries are happening to make sure that they grab the produce. Um, sometimes we do uh, Gatorade and things like that, or one time we made sure to take all of the protein that we had, so peanut butter, we had some canned tuna, um, some other items that he took for athletes specifically and made them go through the line. Uh, there's a lot of athletes that don't get a lot of meals. So it's a really great thing, uh, and so we thought once we get this going, what would be the next school that would need a pantry, and so we um, decided it was North Star High School and uh, we were able to get half of the funds that we needed for North Star 
to start a pantry. We're still looking for the other half. Um, but they started yesterday with their first pantry and they saw 223 kids. Um, their population is a little bit bigger uh, than Lincoln High, but there was quite a few kids that came down and a lot of thank yous and staff uh, all helped. And it was a great, a great thing. These high school pantries are very unique, um, particularly in these two high schools where poverty is high, um, there's a lot of students in need, and so it wasn't, it's not a big deal to go and get food. Um, they really tried to market it. They call it the food market, so they don't advertise that it's the food bank or that it's for people in need. Um, they encourage everyone to at least stop down and just see what they have. North Star particularly had quite a few parents that came. Uh, which was nice to see. Um, so we expect that one to grow a lot larger than Lincoln High. Uh, when we first started Lincoln High, there was maybe 120 kids the first time we did it. So for North Star to come out with 223, we expect to be over 300 in the next couple weeks. Uh, so that'll be a big one. And then we hope to get one going in Beatrice, um, a mobile pantry. Got one of their high schools, that's kind of our next goal. And then we started some backpack programs in middle schools who requested them. Dawes and Color have both have had a backpack program. Um, and we just started Goodrich Middle School, which is just down here on 28th and Superior. And SCO Middle School is ready to start a program too. They want to do at least 30 kids. So um, we're still moving with backpacks, still trying to get into some schools. We have added some schools with lower free reduced lunch numbers. Even in Sheridan have both started a program, which traditionally don't have a high number of students on free or reduced lunch, but they still have plenty of kids that can use the backpack. So we've been able to start those programs and uh, we're looking at Cooser, Cooser's interested in also starting a backpack program. So there's still a lot of work uh, to be done with those programs, um, but we're trying to think of other ways to feed kids and how we can get food to families, um, not just through backpack program. Uh, we still operate our emergency pantry, which you guys have been helping with, and it's been very busy this year. Um, our struggle right now is taking food over there, finding food for that, and keeping it stocked. Um, we took food over there Friday, and I'm not sure which club volunteers on Monday. It's not you guys, is it? No. <coughs> um, a volunteer called and said, we don't have any food. So I had to run and take something over there to get through and then we're taking food over there again today. So um, I think each time that I've been there, there's been at least 15 families that have come in. Um, so the word has spread and a lot of families are in need and uh, it's a really neat thing that they can rely on this pantry and feel comfortable to come and get food. Uh, a couple weeks ago, I had a mom email me and just, just and asked a ton of questions about the pantry and at the end of the email, she apologized saying, I'm sorry, this is just my first time having to seek assistance really overwhelmed and nervous so anything you can offer to help me um, to go to this pantry and what I need to do would be a great help so um, there's a lot of that I think still happening a lot of parents that are struggling and have never had to ask for help and that are needing to Evelyn is there um, is there some, something we can help with because because of the shortage of food? Yeah, a, a food drive. If you guys wanted to bring some food, that would be great. Right now, we're kind of waiting. Um, Lincoln Public Schools will do a food drive in the fall, but it's not until the end of October, beginning of November. So we kind of wait around. Right now, we're using backpack food, which is purchased, which you don't want to do because um, I don't have funds to help that out. Um, but we're trying to get food over there until that comes. So it will come at the beginning of November, and then we have to sort it. and. Um, case it up so it really won't be until the middle of November, end of November, that we'll have a lot of food to put over there. So if you guys wanted to do something, you definitely could or bring some when you go. That's always helpful. So would there be a list? Of yeah, I can get you a need. list. Um, it's just basic uh, items, shelf stables, boxed meals, cereals, uh, canned meats, peanut butter and jelly, canned fruits and vegetables are a big item. Okay, so I'll give you my email. Yes. Maybe I can send that out. Yeah, that would be helpful. Yeah. Uh, with the older kids, uh, do you get good participation? I know they sometimes are kind of proud. We do uh, get good participation, surprisingly. Um, middle school is a little different. It works a little different. Each middle school does it differently. 
um, you know, Goodrich, they have a large number of kids that could get a backpack, but only 30 of them signed up. And we were expecting at least 50, and that may change, but, um, you know, families want these, but it's hard for these kids to come pick it up. Uh, so I know, like, Color Middle School, they meet their kids. They have a 6th, 7th, and 8th grade hallway where kids are always where they exit from. So they just have staff that kind of meet these kids and just discreetly hand them a bag on their way out. So it's not, it wasn't working for them to have them come down and get a backpack at the end of the day. They just weren't doing that. So for them, it's work to just have staff in charge of the sixth grade hallway, seventh grade, and eighth grade, and just get them their bags on their way out. So it's not a big scene. Um, so it is definitely a challenge, uh, which is why we did the, pan the mobile pantry route for the high school. It just works a lot better to have them come down and select food. Um, that they want and that they want to cook for their families and uh, we've had a lot of good feedback from high school students who um, are cooking their food on their own or getting it for their siblings. We hear all the time about, um, oh my brother's going to be so excited that I'm bringing this home or oh I'm going to make sure to get this or last time I was at Lincoln and I we had apples and um, one girl she described a couple things and we said do you want some apples? Do you? And she said no. I saw some of the people out there that I know and I know that they need it way more than I do so I'm not going to take the apples. Um, so it's a very neat thing uh, these high school students and I think it has a lot to do with the culture that particularly Lincoln High has built for that student body that it's okay and that we accept this is what it is and let's work together and make sure that we can have a good partnership and get what you guys need and it's just that culture that they've built um, that the teachers and even staff will come down and get a bag so I think it's really unique that Lincoln High has made that atmosphere for them. Yes? Ten hours speaking one younger person um, at the churches of us too like you know, my church and mm -hmm. my church too. Yeah. They can, um, and a lot of churches do help us. I know Southwood Lutheran, they do some food drives for us. Um, they do a lot for us. They help with the backpack program, and so there are some churches that do it. It is very labor intensive, food drives are for us. Um, to have to come and pick it up, uh, it costs a lot of money for our trucks to go out and get it. Um, a lot of food drives are small, so um, to pick up, to have a truck go pick up one barrel, uh, it's really hard for us to justify the cost um, and then we have to sort everything and get it cased up. So it is very labor intensive, but for the pantry in particular it works because we do, that's what we use for that pantry. And there are big churches, um, Berean just did a 50,000 pound food drive, so that's our largest food drive that we've had. Why not have the cost too, a huge church. Yes, they do have a huge church. <coughs> Yeah, they pack backpacks for us, so they do do that. Uh, so just some new, lots of things going on, which is why we're kind of trying to frame it child hunger. We're working, we're going to work with Educare, which is the new um, daycare or child care provider down by Belmont, which is where you guys are. I don't know if you guys have seen it. I haven't driven by there, but they focus on zero to five uh, low-income children who are at risk <coughs> of not being ready by kindergarten. So it's this idea of let's get quality childcare to low income families who don't have access to that so that these kids are ready for kindergarten. So um, we're trying to partner with them and figure out how can we reach these toddlers to make sure that they're getting the right nutrition, these families are getting access to good quality foods and things that they need, which also has a part in making sure that they are developmentally ready for kindergarten. So that's a new thing too. It's a, framing it a zero to five program. It's more on the preventative end, so how can we get these kids before they get to elementary or middle school um, and they haven't had the fundamental things such as good nutrition from the beginning. So we're working on that. We have a pediatrician on our board who's really enthused about this idea. So that's why we're framing it, child hunger programs, instead of just backpack, we're really trying to expand uh, what we're doing and how we're feeding children and really put it under one umbrella. Well, I don't know how to uh, highlight your local grants where you're going to go over some of the trailers. Yes, that, um, I don't know if you've heard, it's called Promise Neighborhoods, and it's a $30 million grant that UNL wrote with um, Lincoln Public Schools. And um, Josh Kramer, um, who some of you might know, he used to work at Teammates, which is how I know him, because I used to work at Teammates. 
Um, he's now in federal programs at LPS and Rogue. He helped write the majority of this grant. And the idea is, um, I don't know if any of you have heard of Whatever It Takes. It's a book uh, by a gentleman, I think his name's Anthony Canada, who wrote, who uh, took a neighborhood in the Bronx and completely reformed it and reshaped everything about that neighborhood, everything about the schools, um, policies that are in place that were barriers for these families, public assistance, just really took from the ground up approach and and really change the path of these families, whether it was parenting skills. Um, I mean, it was this, it was a crazy approach, but the idea is to, how could we bring that to Lincoln? And uh, Josh Kramer's idea was to focus on mobile home courts. Uh, we have quite a few of them. And um, how can we change the path of these families so that they, so these children don't end up in poverty? So what are the barriers of why families are not moving out of poverty? what can we do to make that happen and it's a very uh, it's, it's a very crazy approach I mean it's changing everything everything that we've been doing everything uh, the schools have to be open to being criticized and how they're doing stuff the city has to be able to be open to we need to change this um, in order to make this happen and so you have to be on board with it and our part is feeding of course these families um, so providing backpacks for mobile home park families we chose about four to target that had the highest number of families um, so feeding doing mobile pantries um, doing some food stamp outreach so getting families who are qualified on snap getting them things like formula and things like that um, so it's a five-year approach um, to how we can change and really help these families move and the main thing is education, providing them education. I guess a fan, Josh had said that um, the number one predictor of how a family um, will be successful or how you can change the course of a family is by the education of the mother of the household. So how can we, um, I think in 2008, 30% of the households here in Lancaster County were single parent households, babies that were being born. So how can we make sure that these mothers are getting education because we know that can change the course of their family. So that's a big one. Um, they find out in December. So it's a really competitive grant. Omaha tried to get it last year and they did not get it. Um, so we're hoping that we can get it. There's quite a few families that are at risk. Um, not some good, there are, there are good home home courts. Um, and I think that there's a great opportunity to help these families. I think when he did some research uh, of the kids that qualified from zero to five, something like 4% were only enrolled in early education um, programs. So there's a huge risk right there for kids who, uh, I think nationally 50% of kindergartners who are going to kindergarten aren't ready for kindergarten. So there's a huge opportunity. And we know once you enter um, by age three, that's your peak, uh, your brain is at its highest function for learning at age three. And if you miss any of those fundamental things, don't catch up, you can't rebuild those things, and so you're already behind once you get to kindergarten, and it's just near impossible for these kids to catch up. So uh, the idea is how can we make sure that these kids are okay? I'm really excited about it. I'm hopeful. Um, Josh writes really great grants, and he usually gets them, so I'm hoping this will be another one. But it'll be a big deal for the food bank um, for us to feed all of these families. We get a lot better nutrition to families. That's one of our main focuses. And then of course, education, nutrition education, uh, SNAP education. Uh, so it's really getting those families and moving them out of their situation. So that's what's going on there. Uh, are there any questions about that? I try not to be too excited about it. <laughs> we don't get it because I think there's I don't want to get too excited, but the idea is great, and it's really that idea of it takes a village to raise children. Can you talk about the summer? Yes. Yeah. Did you have a question, really? Uh, I remember one time I heard Scott talk, and he said he'd rather <clears throat> somebody give him $10 mm -hmm. to go out buy $10 worth of food. Yeah. Because he can buy more than Yes, we can. So we can incorporate you can do donations. Um, for every dollar that gets donated, we can distribute up to six dollars worth of food. And that's just our buying power, um, how we can turn around food. Our big focus this year has been produce. 
Um, 30% of our distributed pounds are fresh produce, so we're trying to get fresh produce out to the community. We're one of the top 20 food banks out of 200 food banks for distributing produce to people. Uh, so for Nebraska, that's pretty good um, because we're competing with places like California and Florida who just have uh, a never-ending supply that they are at every conference. We don't know what to do with all this produce. Um, so we're really proud of that. Uh, but we estimate, and we'll spend probably close to $300,000 this year on produce, um, getting produce out, buying that. Uh, but when you think about it, it's about, for $5,000 you can buy a whole truckload of produce. Um, that's a lot of produce to get out to families. So it's a really great deal. You can't get that amount of produce anywhere else. And when you, we serve about 10,000 individuals each week. So the truckloads of produce are really key for us to get families the most amount of food that we can for the lowest cost. Um, but it is hard to get food. Manufacturers and retailers, they're all getting really good with their inventory and they're not making as many mistakes anymore. And um, it's tough for food banks because that's what you become reliant on is those mistakes or those uh, boxes being put on backwards. So that means you get a whole truckload of cereal uh, and that just simply isn't happening anymore. So uh, you kind of have to think differently about how you gather food and how you distribute it, what you are going to distribute. Um, because it is definitely a challenge for us um, to get food and um, USDA food that we got that we would get that's dramatically been cut down. Um, so it is a struggle, but we have been doing well. We're hoping to get around 9 million pounds distributed this year. Um, we're getting close. We had our first million pound month in July. We've never had a million pound month um, ever in the 30 year history of the bank. We had one in July, so that was really exciting for us. Um, big celebration. We uh, distribute about 17,580 pounds per hour that we're open. So a lot of food coming in and a lot of food going out at the food bank. Uh, we have lots of different programs and ways to get food out to uh, people. We have 64 agencies that we work with throughout Southeast Nebraska that distribute food for us. So they can come to the food bank, we deliver food to them, places like Salvation Army, People City Mission, um, Friendship Home, Center for People in Need, they all, F Street Rec, they all distribute food for us. And then <coughs> um, we go out in the rural communities, we also do mobile pantries. Catholic Social Services runs those for us, so they use their truck a lot of times to get food out to those rural communities and they run those for us for there um, every week somewhere distributing food. But again, um, for a lot of those places it's once a month, once or twice a month, which is not enough. But, working on how we can get more food out to those rural communities. About 20% of our food that we have goes to our rural communities, which is not a lot. Uh, the majority of the food, because it's easiest, comes here in Lincoln, but there's a lot more need in our rural communities. Uh, we also are working on growing our SNAP program, which is a food stamp program. We now have three workers that their jobs every day are to get people signed up for food stamps that qualify and to turn in a flawless application. Um, so we have a Spanish speaking SNAP person and then two uh, other full time SNAP workers that are out at all of our distributions, taking phone calls uh, to try to get people um, signed up if they qualify and also to make sure that all their paperwork is correct. Um, it's now all online, so it's a challenge for a lot of families who don't have a computer or just lack those computer skills to enter in all of that information. Um, so we have workers that are doing that and we can follow up. The state of Nebraska has given us access to their system so we can follow up, we can see where the case is, um, we can see what they're missing or why they are denied things like that. So it's very nice. It's a good system. Um, but we know there's a lot of families that do qualify that just aren't signing up. So that's their job. Uh, and we still have a housewarming project, which is a smaller program, but it's through the Good Neighbor Community Center where any, uh, any person that's coming out of a transition um, shelter, such as Friendship Home, uh, Fresh Start, St. Monica's, the People City Mission, Center point, they can go to the Good Neighbor Center and get a hundred pounds of food and a housewarming bag, which is cleaning supplies and um, toiletry items to start in their new home. So it's not a big program, but uh, we still do it, and it's really important for um, us to reach out to those.
families and those parents who have really worked hard to get to their new place. Um, that is all that's going on. We're entering our busiest last quarter of the year. This will be the busiest time for food banking as far as the holidays that are coming up. And uh, this is our last quarter to do our last oomph of fundraising to end the year in the black. So um, it's definitely a busy time for us.